coming to you live from Newegg Studios in Southern California. This is Newegg Now. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. We're here every Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, and you can watch along on YouTube, Facebook, and Newegg.com. But the very best place to be during the next hour is Newegg.com slash Newegg Now, because that's where you can both watch us and the show and our awesome interviews and all of our cool commentary and see all the limited time deals that just went live moments ago and which will only last through the end of the day today. That's true. true. Uh, deals are the engine that makes Newegg now go. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and kick it off with the Corsair Hydro Series H100i cooler on that deals page, for example. This is an all-in-one liquid cooler with a 240 millimeter dual fan radiator. It has an improved cold plate and pump design. It's more efficient and gives you lower temperatures with less noise. And of yeah. course, it has customizable RGB lighting, which RGB also makes your things. PC cooler, but that's more in the like, hey, hey that's, that's cool. cool. Exactly. Yeah. Sense. You know where I'm going <laughs> rather than the temperature. Uh, didn't want to confuse anybody there. So today, with that promo code you'll find on that Newig Now page, you can save a total of $25 off Corsair's Hydro H100i cooler after taking advantage of the mail-in rebate. I was really going to try not to step on you with a bunch of dad puns throughout all of that. You can throw in dad jokes anytime. I read an article that said that dad jokes are actually funnier the older you get in life because you have more experience and it means that you're smarter if you think dad jokes are funny. I, story, maybe a dad I've, wrote that article. I don't I've, know. but I've, I've gotten pretty smart, so uh, that's why I'm so funny now. It's true. Like, uh, I don't know where I was going to go with that. Okay. So we should probably also remind people that Newegg Now deals are very time sensitive. Yes. They're very limited. These are savings over and above what Newegg normally offers, which means the clock is ticking to take advantage of the promotions. All Newegg Now deals expire at the end of the day today mm -hmm. or while supplies last. So when supplies run out, they're gone. If you see anything you like on Newegg.com slash Newegg Now, you should not wait to pick it up. Staying on the subject of Corsair, you'll see on that page that we also have an RM750X PSU. That's a 750 watt fully modular power supply and you can save a total of $35 on it after a mail-in rebate. And then we also have the Corsair <laughs> Crystal 570X RGB case. This is one of the coolest looking PC cases that I think we've ever featured on New Now. We see this in so many builds when we reach out to so people. So many this builds. Is, this is a very popular case and for good reason. Yes. And it has four removable tempered glass panels. So you can save $50 off that very super cool case after the mail-in rebate and start building something really eye-catching and then send us your photos. And super cool because it looks cool. We're going to say cool a lot today. Yeah, I think we are. So coming up on the show today, we're going to be joined by a representative from Patriot Memory, Patriot Viper, for a look at a new, interesting, blazing fast external storage. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we're going to have the folks from Gigabyte in the house for a deep dive. Into, the 20, into their 2080 Ti GPUs, including some live benchmarking. They're gonna be disassembling stuff in front of us on the show, it's gonna be Neat. epic. It's gonna be epic. Yeah, we'll also be talking about a lot more of those deals on that New Ing Now page throughout the show today. And we'll be sharing some PC troubleshooting tips Straight from you guys, our wonderful Newegg audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yes, you for sending in your you. PC tips. Some great discussion. So stay right where you are because we'll be right back with Patriot. to Newegg now. Hey. We've got some exciting tech in the studio right now and here to tell us about it, let's welcome Les Henry from Patriot. Welcome, Les. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, thanks for jumping in. Mm -hmm. So so to start things off, yes. can you tell us a little bit about Patriot and what the company specializes in? Sure. So Patriot's actually been around for 33 years. We started back in 1985 uh, as PDP Systems. 
and 2006, we decided we're going to go into our own brand and launch our own line. So we launched Patriot. And we're currently specializing in uh, Viper memory, Viper gaming products, like our keyboards, accessories, mice, and headsets, as well as uh, overclock. I think I said overclock memory. <laughs> <That's just laughs> Yes. So, so not only not only moving Patriot to become a brand separate from some of the the system builder stuff, but then also building Viper under that Patriot label for the performance tier of the products that you guys are making. Yeah, we target the gaming market. That's correct. Nice. So, yeah. uh, and what do you do with Patriot? What what's a normal day look like for you? So, for me now, I'm uh, head of the North American sales. So, I'm overseeing all our reps within North America and South America. So that's my tip. A lot of day. travel. Me personally, yes. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're racking up your uh, frequent flyer miles? That's correct. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Good, good so job. Patriot has a lot of different products that people can check out here on Newegg. On Newegg. But you're here today specifically to show off what you have in front of you on the table. So what is it and what should people know about it? Yeah, so it's an exciting new launch. We recently launched this portable um, external SSD. It utilizes Intel's Thunderbolt 3 technology, and we worked with Intel for the past couple months to get this guy launched, and mm -hmm. we're very happy about it. So what's so special about it is the Thunderbolt 3 technology. So Thunderbolt 3 technology will allow you to have data transfer rates of up to 40, gigabits per, 40 gigabytes per second. Okay, that's eight times faster than the standard USB product yeah. out there that only goes up to five gigabytes per second. Well, and, and, and it's worth mentioning, you know, like, I was so happy to hear you mid-sentence correct that the terminology, the oh, gigabit gigabytes, per second gigabytes. data rate versus the gigabyte per second data rate. It's eightfold. That's right. The difference in, in data speed transmission. Yes, that's correct. So who is Evolver designed for? Like, what kind of consumer are you guys targeting with this product? So we're going after uh, content creators. You got videographers, professional photographers, um, IT professionals. So when I say content creators, so any of those, any of you guys that are Photoshop users out there, you know what a drag it is to try and edit a file that's on an external drive. You usually yeah. have to bring it to your local and work on it. Mm -hmm. Well, with the Thunderbolt, you can actually edit it right off the Thunderbolt drive. You don't need to bring it over, so there's no lag. Right. Now, I've been running into that a lot with, because um, we've talked about other like content creation scenarios. Even now when I'm editing up wacky little vlogs, I'm shooting 4K video from phones. And it, and it is, it's like I have to make manage that step in moving data from one, I've got an archive of like clips or uh, graphics that I want to insert, music files, things like that. I end up walking around with this portable drive, but then everything needs to live on the laptop while I'm doing the editing. Right, yeah, so I mean, it, it's a big difference. Having that, that, you know, the Thunderbolt 3, we call it a pipe, 40, gig, 40 gigabyte pipe, pipe. it's a much bigger pipe. It's easier for the data to transfer back and forth. You don't get that lag. Yeah, you have the series of tubes on your computer right. to move That's information right. around on. So. Right. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about the speed that we can see with Evolver. How fast can this really go? So for both, uh, right now we're going up to 1,600 megabytes per second read mm -hmm. and 1,000 megabytes per second write. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're able to achieve those speeds because inside we're using a PCI uh, SSD technology. So we're going with the PCI technology. Mm -hmm. So if we were to use like a SATA drive or a SATA 3, we'd be limited around 500 read, 500 write. Yeah, that seems to be kind of the general tier that in internal solid state drives tapped out at. Exactly, and I actually have a quick demo. Um, oh, actually, oh, we, cool. can, we can we probably can throw, throw to, throw his, uh, stream, to his laptop. Yeah. He's connected. Okay. Yeah, here we go. All right. Very so cool. It's a very simple demo. So all it is is a two gig file that's on my PC. So here I've got the Evolver drive connected to a Thunderbolt 3 port. Mm -hmm. And here I've got a um, SATA 3 external SSD using USB 3.1. Okay. okay. I'll take the same file and copy it above. So this is going to our Thunderbolt 3 Evolver drive. And go. go. And drop. About two seconds. Very nice. fast. It's over. Okay. Same file going to a Doing SSD this portable. I'm so nervous. What's gonna happen? Oh, so we've not actually, as fast. We've actually timed USB. this. It's about 17 seconds. So you're looking at <laughs> two seconds to 17 seconds, and that's your 8x time difference. Between. Now, I mean, so I think that there's there, there's always that conflating of a conversation between people that have a different 
tier of requirements versus general consumers. What's the big deal? Two gigabyte file, 15 to 20 seconds to transfer it. That's actually pretty good. That's not what you're going for yeah. with Evolver. No, of course not. So going back, going back to you asking the question, who would use this drive, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at IT professionals or videographers, um, I, you know, we were talking before the show, you guys have mentioned you got, I think, 40 gigs of video yeah. and music. Mm -hmm. All right, those add up. Oh, so. you, we, we had a cranky iPhone rant off camera <laughs> talking about some of my experiences reviewing the iPhone XS. Uh, and just, just yesterday, I had to transfer a 46 gigabyte file, and it took quite some time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's painful watching that slider tick over for data transfer. Yep. I mean, can you imagine, so this two gig file, imagine having a library that has hundreds or thousands of these two gig files yeah. that you need to transfer. So you save eight X of time. It, just, it would save you a lot of time. Now yeah. with something like this and the kind of data that we've been talking about, reliability is obviously a huge concern here. Yeah. What can you tell us about the durability and warranty that comes with Evolver? We offer two year warranty with the Evolver. Okay. And then durability, I mean, the fact that it's an SSD versus the traditional HDD, you don't have to worry about dropping it, vibration, shock. So it, you still get the safety of an SSD. Cool. So if someone has liked the sound of this product so far, uh, what do <laughs> they? What do they need to take advantage of it? Will it work with any PC on the market? No. So unfortunately, okay. oh, you, you took a big sigh there. I actually looked up some of the reviews, some of the early reviews on Evolver, and there seemed to be an education barrier for this product, I guess would be a kind way I of putting... I think for Thunderbolt 3, yeah. So any Thunderbolt 3 type product, mm -hmm. there's still um, an education that needs to happen, as you said, right? So with the Evolver, it uses a Type-C connector. Yeah. Okay, but it's Thunderbolt 3 Type-C connector. Mm -hmm. So there's also out in the market, there's USB Type-C connectors. So I think there's some confusion as to where this works. So I'll try and make it simple. With the uh, Thunderbolt 3, it's backwards compatible. Well, it will support USB products. Yeah, if you have a Thunderbolt port on your laptop, mm -hmm. you can plug in USB either products. Either a Thunderbolt 3 or a USB. Right. Either one will work in the Thunderbolt 3 port on your laptop. Right. However, if your laptop is a USB type C only, it only supports USB products. USB technology doesn't support the doesn't Thunderbolt. Doesn't upscale the Thunderbolt. That's and Evolver right. does not have a fallback for USB-C. No, it does not. This is a okay. Thunderbolt drive. It is a true Thunderbolt 3 drive. That is correct. So, because I noticed a lot of complaints from not MacBook Pro, but MacBook users. Ah, mm. oh, it doesn't work. Because they have the standard type C. Exactly. Correct. Yeah, so, but the good news is, is that there are many, I know Intel's really pushing the Thunderbolt 3 um, with the manufacturer, P PC manufacturers out there, the mm -hmm. motherboard manufacturers. So guys, like I know Apple, they've, they've adopted, I think, in the MacBook Pros. Yeah. Um, it hasn't gone to the MacBook yet. And then you got Dell, Lenovo, HP, and then the motherboard guys, uh, Gigabyte, Asus, mm -hmm. um, ASRock, and well, MSI, they're all adding this into their latest and greatest systems. Is, is Patriot three. looking at the market and the timing on this now because of, I mean, because we've had a couple other, like gaming manufacturers on to talk about things like external GPUs. Right, you know, like Thunderbolt taking advantage of that kind of desktop grade hardware for laptops. Was the timing on Evolver affected by that in the market? Because I have an old Razer laptop that has a Thunderbolt 3 port on it, and it really feels like I'm only just now getting stuff that I can use with it that's not just USB. Yeah, um, I think we've been working on this for like the past five months, but. Mm -hmm. Because the timing seems right for it. It, it I mean, does. Like We're seeing, um, there's, there's more of a, uh, working with Intel, there, there seems to be more of an initiative, yeah, to get this product out. Because like, like I said, there's, you had your, your notebook for a few months. Oh, I've had, I've had my Razer laptop like, for a couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah, yeah, it was one of the first laptops that had, a, Thunderbolt 3. that had a Thunderbolt 3 on it. So this is now almost three years, two years old. Uh, and it really feels like, it's a nice thing I future-proofed, but <laughs> it's like it took a while it took for a while that to catch, yeah. up. to catch up. Yeah, I get you. So what's going on now in the market is, um, like I mentioned, the, uh, Intel is working with the uh, PC manufacturers and the motherboard guys. So now there's more of an initiative from their end to get these products out in the market. So for guys like us, now we got more of an initiative mm -hmm. to bring products out that'll support that. So that Intel support really helped move the needle Absolutely. internally at Patriot. Yes. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So if people at home are on board, they've got Thunderbolt 3, they want to get an Evolver, uh, what capacities are available to them? Right now we have 512 gig and one terabyte. Okay. Yeah. 
Very, very cool. And is there anything else people should know about the Evolver? No, I mean, it's all about the speed, right? So just, <laughs> just some like, fun facts. You've got to write the right audience for this. It's like, speed. You like speed, this Get is the it. product for you. Do the speed. <laughs> why, do you, why do you like slow things? Don't like slow things. Like yeah. fast things. Uh, oh, okay, well, there you go. It's broken down. Uh, Les, thank you so very much for coming by to talk to us today and for showing off Evolver. Thanks for having me. Thanks, yeah. appreciate it. Excellent. So if you out there are interested in picking up the Evolver for yourself, head to newegg.com slash newegg now. Check it out there. Through Newegg Now, today only, you can get the one terabyte model of the Evolver external solid state drive for $35 off the normal price. That's pretty good. And you'll get a 120 gigabyte supersonic Rage 2 flash drive from Patriot as a free gift. That combo rocks. I actually have a collection of Patriot USB flash drives that have served me very, very well. There you go. Personal endorsement from Juan Carlos by like now. Um, we also have the 512 gigabyte model of that same drive for that same deal, $35 off, plus the free flash drive. And as you just heard, the Evolver is a fantastic option for a wide range of users who want to take advantage of the super fast transfer speeds that you can get with Thunderbolt 3. So don't miss your chance to save money on this drive while you can. Yeah, so a few more great deals from Patriot and Viper. That's uh, Patriot's gaming brand. We were talking about their, their uh, performance targeted brand. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check that out on Newegg now. You can save money on either eight or 16 gigabytes of Patriot DDR4 RAM, or pick up the Viper LED gaming mouse pad for just $21.99, which is $18 off the normal price. And then one more time, all of those deals are on the newegg.com slash newegg now page right now, and they are live through the end of today only while supplies last. So we'll be right back talking to Gigabyte about their new RTX 2080 GPUs. Good times. <laughs> Welcome back to Newegg Now. We have some really cool stuff getting set up <laughs> just off camera just off here camera. to my right. Pay no attention to the right to, of camera. To the man behind the side of this <laughs> part of the frame. But since this is a live show and it's all happening right now, mm -hmm. I, as I speak, we need to fill some time. Yeah. I'm distracting you with the sound of my voice so our Newegg Ninjas can get everything and like. Ready. A Christopher Walken impression. I, that wasn't intentional, that. <laughs> but it did kind of happen. I don't know why. All right, cool. I actually don't have a good Christopher Walken. I've got a very bad Jay Moore okay. doing a good Christopher Walken. That's as close as I can get. I, you know what? All of my impressions are very bad impressions Jay Moore of someone else doing. doing the impression. Yep. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I, one of the things that I think uh, we wanted to vamp on a little bit um, to, to, to get some gaming news. Into, yeah, into let's squeeze some gaming into this episode. <laughs> so many, I mean, like, we're, we're getting into harvest season for the end of the year game releases, the end of the year tech releases, the end of the year smartphone releases. But um, definitely one of the ones that I wanted to talk about after our conversation last week, talking about open world and story driven yes. titles, Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, yeah. the, the second trailer came out. The and second I was, gameplay trailer came out. I was out. wondering what you thought about the new revelations for, for RD2. Um, well, I mean, there's tons of new gameplay features. That, that it's it's bigger is better is the idea. We've seen yeah. that a lot. It, it, that was the trend we were talking about when it comes to open world, that you can really do everything and interact with everything. everything. Um, and so some of the new features that they talked about in this trailer or showed off in this trailer, I should say, um, things like you can decide what to eat. You can decide when or when not to bathe. You can gain and lose weight. <laughs> Your guns now degrade and jam, like just adding so much yeah. more 
detail into the experience and really allowing your choices not only to dictate the storyline of the game, but really your experience of the game as well. Did that feel a little Grand Theft Auto to you? Some of the lifestyle things, you know, like there, there was a point in, I forget which GTA it was, but like I was all hyped up like, yeah, I'm gonna do this triathlon in the middle of my Grand Theft yeah. Auto experience. And it feels like some sure. of that influence coming into the Red Dead world. You totally can. Well, I mean, I think that we have gamers here who fall in love with the game, not necessarily for the story, although maybe yeah. they love the story, but I feel like we have so many gamers now that are falling in love with games because of the world. How many people yeah. are playing Spider-Man right now that just want to swing around New York? Oh, and not only that, you've been <laughs> listening like some, some of our favorite podcasts talking about like, just take the Spider-Man engine yeah. and kind of cut out Spider-Man and then put in Doctor Strange or put in Iron mm -hmm. Man. And you literally could just remake a significant chunk of the game without changing any of the engine, yeah. any of the city. Oh, it's the same map. Yeah, it's New York. It's New York City. <laughs> it's New York City, you could do that. But um, for RD2, I, I, I thought it was interesting. Do you think some of, the, some of what they showed off with like the first person perspective, because I know you really like adventure, adventure games, but you're not super into like your, your first person shooters. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, I, and it's not the first person viewpoint that oh, okay. I don't it's care for. It's more just Twitch. It's, it's like, honestly, it's the mechanics of shooters are just not my jam. My hand eye coordination is not on the level of some people who are incredibly competitive. And I, it's not I fun can't. for me to just get slaughtered all the time. <laughs> um, so I much more prefer a single player campaign experience where I can adjust the difficulty settings as right. needed, which is why, you know, right now she, I'm all about like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, right. Yeah. She says this after she like wiped the floor with me in Overwatch. So uh, again. That's, that's more of an insult to you <laughs> than a compliment to me, to be perfectly honest. This is suicide by words. Yeah, um. I, on, my, on my Twitch stream, uh, sometimes I will stream with viewers. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, you know, we'll team up and we'll go in and we always get slaughtered. <laughs> Always, every time. It's it's unceremonious. Like I had to kind of like back. I'd be like, my screen name in Overwatch has no connection to people being able to find me because <laughs> I'm so bad. Well, you can you know you get one free Battle.net uh, gamer type name change. So no, I know. I, I know. I'm purposely oh, keeping distance. I get it. Like I don't like. If you find me, you've, if you've ever played against me in Overwatch, chances are pretty good that you wrecked me bad. No, Overwatch um, gives me like <laughs> bad, bad PE class flashbacks where it's like I'm the handicap on the team. So sorry, everyone else. I really want to play. It looks like fun. I just see. I have you know. that. I have that difficulty because I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm pretty good at kickball. No, I can't help you in Overwatch. I am gonna drag you down. This is not gonna be pretty. It's all practice makes perfect. So Oof, sometime we like will. That. Maybe just skip doing New Egg now and practice Overwatch. And, Not you know. a bad idea. And actually have that's people watch our training session no, montages. That's of, a bad idea. And every day you get a little bit better. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, because you've been playing so much Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I finally have started grinding some Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yay! Are you I loving it? I absolutely adore the difference in puzzle mechanic difficulty mm -hmm. that you can control versus yep. action. I didn't think that this was, I, I love that the more cinematic aspect of this game can be altered so that I don't instant insta-die in action right. sequences, but I can still keep other parts of the game, the, the parts that I enjoy more now as I get older. Um, You're into the puzzles. You're into I'm the into the puzzles. Yeah. I'm into the exploration and I'm mm -hmm. into the puzzles. And, and so I'm looking at games like Red Dead 2, and now I'm kind of wanting this separation in all of my story-driven games where I can have that feeling of, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, but I don't need the game to be defined just by the action set pieces being as hard as possible that I have to die over and over and over and over again until I get good. Well, and depending on the game design, sometimes that's the fun of the game. Yeah, It's exactly. how incredibly challenging it is so that by the time you finally master it, you feel like, you know, you've really like you're a god, it. you've but, done it. But I don't want that roguelike feeling in the middle of a story. You know, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I just had my teeth kicked in right. while I'm trying to get to the next plot point. And Tomb Raider does that so well. I think they do. I, I, think, I think games are really diversifying right now for the vast amount of gamers that are out there and the vast amount of different play styles that people enjoy. Nice. And it's really nice to see. Okay. Um, so it looks like we are now all set wow, over this on pretty. this side. And wait till you guys see it. Let's go ahead and welcome awesome. Matt from Gigabyte. Hey, hey Matt. Matt. Hey guys, thanks for having me. You made it. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Cool. So uh, to start things off, Matt, 
What, what is your title and what do you do with Gigabyte? So I'm the product marketing manager and what I do depends on the day of the week. Um, so for today, I'm here with you guys, which I'm totally excited about, um, but I handle all of the technical marketing. So nice. whether it's product specs, um, things that are coming up, what can we can do to improve our next GPU or our next motherboard. Um, so I tie in a lot with our headquarters and our engineers. And we even employed you for some minor tech support as I had accidentally enabled <laughs> a, high, a high performance fan setting on my laptop. The noisiest yeah. fan <laughs> that, setting that ever. You were kind enough to show me what I had done wrong. So thank you for also <laughs> filling in for that role for us. Uh, just so there's, there's no confusion about the... Um, about this back here. What's going on over here. Uh, Gigabyte. The parent company, yes. mm -hmm. what, what, it, how does Aorus fit into that uh, relationship? Right, so great question we get asked all the time. So Aorus is our gaming brand, right? It's our premium gaming brand. We rolled it out to all of our products maybe two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of new, but now it's become a lot more mainstream. So Gigabyte's still there, it's still the parent company, um, and it's still where all of the engineering and the R&D comes in. And then we kind of put our Aorus flair on things, right? Nice. So we add some RGB, um, we have new uh, cards that we'll kind of tease a little bit later with some cool RGB in them. Um, the motherboard you have in front of you, the RAM you have in front of you uh, is Aorus. So anything that's just got that little extra premium layer usually goes under the Aorus brand. Nice. Awesome. Um, so you obviously have a lot of sweet tech sitting in front of you right <laughs> yes. now on the table. What are you going to be showing us today? Uh, well, so there's been a lot of talk about 2080, and that's what we have down here. But I wanted to kind of show you guys like the generational changes, right? And that um, it's not just putting a new GPU into uh, a housing. It's actually like little refinements that we make over time. So starting on my left, this is going to be the 10, or, sorry, 780 Ti. Um, and do you guys have any idea when this came out? No. I... 780? 780 Ti. Six years ago? Uh, yeah, it's about, so 2014. Right. Pretty yeah. close. Yeah, pretty close. Uh, Sorry, it's like, I, I, there are so many people in our audience that are probably like smashing their faces and their keyboards that it took me that long to do the simple subtraction in my head. That's all right, I had to do the same thing. I was like, 2019, no, it's 2018 still. I'm, right, my exactly. brains, unfortunately. How, how messed up is it is that like we're already moving into 2019. My brain's already on CES and, and that's scary. Exactly. Yep. Totally scary. Ooh, we had a conversation about that here too, like, so Vegas. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so this was uh, our best model in 2014, and then we move on to the 980 Ti, and you'll see like small differences, right? So here we put like the logo on top, and here we kind of bent Folded it down, it start adding in some lights. Uh, then you move on to like the 1080 Ti, and you have RGB lights. And as you can see, like card to card, these cards started blowing up. Yeah. Right. Like the size we they went from, big. you know, just two slot to two and a half, three slot, um, and you know, just huge heat pipes and everything. And what we did is we took all the tech that we have in this card and we moved it over to the Gigabyte model. And so this is our 2080 Gaming OC, 2080 Ti Gaming OC. Um, and so you'll see that it also has the triple fan. Yeah. Um, it has the finned heat sinks. It's got the two eight pin connectors. So even though this is our Gigabyte model, we've taken a lot of the top end tech from this and kind of translated it down uh, to the base gigabyte model over here. Yeah, nice. it's really cool to see all four generations next to each other like right? that. That's cool. It's kind of like a trip through time, right? Just to see like where we were at Dead and you picture lane. like, okay, if I had that car, what did my build look like then? Like, did yeah. I have those like neon cathode lights in my system? Like, you know, way back. And well, then just to see like the refinement. You and, know? and one of the things we've talked about with a number of manufacturers is sort of the refinement on parts that are now intended to be seen. Yes. You know, like PC building was so, such a beige box industry for so long that even, even the considerations of the 780, there was a display, there was an idea behind presenting this like crown jewel of your build. But as we get into this, what, what has Gigabyte's look been? Because it looks to me like there's a trend towards simplifying and refining, a little less of the transformer muscle fiber look. Yeah, the industrial look, I like to call it, right? <laughs> like just the metal everywhere and as weighty as you can get. Um, yeah, so part of my job description, you guys were asking earlier, is that I spend a lot of time on forums, Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, you name it, listening to comments, right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're making this for you guys, the gamers, right? Like, I can like a card, you can like a card, but we want um, the consumers to like the card. And so we've kind of trimmed it down a little bit, and you'll also notice no orange accents. 
So right. Oris's um, color is orange, right? And that's why we put the accents on there. But we found that people would rather have a neutral card and be able to change the color with the RGB, right? Right. You want to build a red system, a blue system, a rainbow system. Having it, a big orange flare on one part of that might. Yeah. My yeah. And so style. it's our branding, but that doesn't necessarily need to be your branding, right? <laughs> and so we've kind of refined it and made it more of like this kind of gray gunmetal look um, so that it fits with anything, right? Um, aesthetically, it's going to fit obviously with our motherboards. They'll line up perfectly with it. But whatever it is you choose to build, we want it to be your system, your card, not our card. Right on. Yeah. So this evolution that we're seeing here brings us right up to now the cutting edge of GPU tech, the RTX 2080 line. Um, what can you tell us about your newest cards? Uh, so it's a big improvement um, over like this card. So this is 1080 Ti. We're going to mm -hmm. do a little bit of benchmarking in a second here, kind of for, to foreshadow. Um, but what we've done is we added three fans. So most of the time, like the baseline models only come with the dual axial fans. Right. Um, so we've added three this time. We've added some subtle RGB here. And then from the actual GPU side of things, I don't know if we can get the um, display out, but we added USB Type-C onto oh, nice. this. And so the idea behind that is for um, VR link. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have this VR headset. You have however many USB cables, two yeah. HDMI cables. Um, hopefully soon we'll have a little dongle and you'll well, be able to was just... Was Gigabyte involved? Because we talked about that a couple weeks back, the, the consortium of tech companies that mm -hmm. were trying to come up with a one cable solution for VR. Yeah. Yeah. So off the top of my head, I think right now it's NVIDIA, Microsoft, uh, Oculus, um, and we're obviously on board with it as well. So our cards will support it. We'll put the header there. Um, and we'll you know, do whatever on the back end engineering wise to get it to work. Nice. At this point, we just need somebody to come out with the dongle, I think. <laughs> right, so someone to actually implement <laughs> the supposed standard. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's chicken or the egg, right? Sometimes you gotta put the hardware right. there so that the, the software comes out or so that the add-ons come out. Um, and that's where we're kind of at right now. Interesting fact, you can charge your phone from it. Um, <laughs> I plugged in my phone just to see, like I wonder if it'll work and it, it um, fast charge my Samsung phone, so excellent. Uh, another charging port, I guess, um, <laughs> if you want. Uh, For the time being. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Thunderbolt three. I was listening to the Viper guy, um, the Patriot guys, and it's yeah. not Thunderbolt three. But those laptops in front of you do have Thunderbolt three. So if no, you want to use theirs, I'm getting so excited that this is becoming. Yeah, the, the, Regular, the promise yeah. of Thunderbolt three was so enticing to me that now we were finally getting to actually use it. That makes me that makes me really happy. Yep, and we're here to talk about RTX cards. We will have uh, some upcoming motherboards, and we have multiple mm -hmm. models with Thunderbolt three on them. So nice. be on the lookout for that uh, very shortly. But yeah, it, they were correct. It's being implemented more and more, and we've been on the bandwagon from the beginning. We were one of the first manufacturers to put it on there back with uh, Z170, mm -hmm. um, so like three generations ago, two CESs ago since we're on that topic. Right. So um, we've had it for quite a while, and we're excited to have other people you know, on board because it really is kind of an all-in-one solution. So It really seems to me like that could be the standard of getting us away from the traditional port system of our motherboards. Like you That was always the promise of USB to begin with, right? right. A universal connector. <laughs> Serial. Bus. And so uh, right now you can do data transfer, you can charge, you can charge your laptop, mm -hmm. um, you can um, do display out, you can daisy chain displays. So yep. the, the spec is there. We just need the ecosystem to, to kind of match. Yeah. yeah. And so hopefully uh, that's what we'll see. So it'll be an exciting uh, rest of the year and CES for yeah. sure. We're getting there. Yeah. Uh, so let's get back to the RTX. Right cards. on. Uh, yeah. Obviously cooling these cards is super important. You yes. mentioned the three fan design. What can you tell us about that? Uh, so, for this card, the, for the first time, what we've done is we've actually changed the direction that the middle fan spins, right? Okay. And so, if all the fans are spinning the same way, the middle and the sides will actually compete with each other because they're okay. not moving air in the same direction. So, it's kind of weird to do with your hands, but if you have one moving one way mm -hmm. and the other moving the other way, the airflow actually goes together, okay. right? Cool. Up and out the card. So, okay. at the top of the card, you have air coming out here, and at the bottom of the card, you have air coming out here. Gotcha. And it's the first time that we've implemented that to um, create less turbulence and to create uh, less noise, right? The, yeah, this is also the only card, I believe, in this price range that has three fans. Uh, yeah, so most of the cards in this price range will have two. We added the third. Um, and then I think we're going to take apart these cards and show you some of the internals. Because it can look good, right? We can put three fans on it, but what's under the hood uh, is something that a lot of people, I think, are interested in. So Now, in, in going three fans, was because the Founders Edition cards are, are their dual blowers, They're right? dual for the first time, yep. 
So what, from Gigabyte's perspective, was this to, to extract as much performance? Is this what yeah, RTX and, is looking Yeah, and kind like? of with bringing these, these different cards. So all three of these cards, not the RTX cards, were all our flagship cards at the time, mm -hmm. right? And this is kind of our introduction base model. And so what we were trying to show is that something that used to be flagship trickles down into mainstream as we see it work better gotcha. and us being able to refine it. So mm -hmm. typically you would only get three fans on, on the a top, top tier top cards. Of the time. Yeah. And we brought that down to the lower tier, um, yeah, to extract more performance, but also because we think that these cards are expensive and you deserve all the performance that's under the hood, right? Well, in, even from the experience of making your PC run quieter for yes. having bought it. Yeah, so aesthetics matter, um, acoustics matter, um, and then of course performance matters, right? It's one package. It's, you can't just do one, you have to do it all, <laughs> right. Right? right? And so that's what we've been trying to do uh, with these cards. And I'm actually uh, super proud of this card. I think it looks great, it runs quiet. We have it running right here, you can't hear it. Um, and uh, and it performs really well in the benchmark. Can, can I just say it's like from from the 1080 and to now the the RTXs, like it still does kind of weird me out when card fans don't spin when they're not under load. Right, and mm -hmm. so we we had that. So we put in the fan <laughs> stop thing, and we used to have like actually on this one you can see it. There's a little LED that'll tell you that the fan stopped because people were freaking right. out. Right, it's like yeah. what's wrong with my card? Right, um, <laughs> and now it's become a little bit more common. But yeah. in the software, we have an option where you can turn it off, where the fans always spin no matter mm -hmm. what, so you're not freaked out that your card <laughs> isn't getting power um, or something like that. So it's always a delicate balance of like new tech versus what you're used to. Yeah, right. right. Because what I'm used to, um, I don't like change, you know, and so. The different ways we overclock today, we'll get into that a little bit too. Um, you know, I'm an old school, you set a number, you set a voltage, and you go. Yeah. So all of this boost stuff, uh, at <laughs> first I was not into, um, but now that I think about it, you know, when I'm playing a game, I want the maximum performance, and when mm -hmm. I'm browsing the internet, I don't want to hear my PC. So it makes yeah. sense, right. I just had to get used to it. Yeah, so it seems like a big difference in the generation here has to do with the thermal design of Absolutely. the new cards compared to the older ones. And I think you're actually prepared to give us a yeah. better look at that difference. I mean, we were teasing it today. We yeah, just yeah. Go so ahead let's and... uh, let's go ahead and pop these cards open. Uh, don't worry if I break it; they're totally cheap cards. We can replace them no oh, problem. God. So, <laughs> oh God! Oh uh, God! This one's actually been through the ringer a little bit. Um, we've had this one around for a while, and this one um, I've taken apart a couple times, but we'll see how it goes. Do so. It. Uh, as opposed to some other breakdowns that you've seen, these are going to be really simple. There's about seven screws on each card, um, as opposed to 70 for some other cards. If you get that reference, I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> and so we'll, uh, we'll show what's under the hood. One of the things that we're really um, proud of is that, kind of like we were talking about with aesthetics um, and noise and then performance, is that we look for total solutions. Okay. So when we pop these cards open, what you'll see is that we don't just cool the GPU like you see right here, mm -hmm. we cool the entire card. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that you can see, and that's not something that most people pay attention to, um, but as a company that's founded on engineering, uh, mm -hmm. it's something that we put a lot of pride into. Nice. Um, and so I'll try to screw faster so while, while, here. While you're grabbing those screws, uh, Catalyst Destiny, I'm just interested if he pulls out the Aorus 2080 Ti, so we can actually see some info on it. That card is IMO, the best looking 2080 Ti right now. Uh, you got some love in our live chat. I don't for... have one on hand. We will do like a little teaser at the very end of it, so I guess we're kind of burying the lead on that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we will have them uh, very soon. Um, and you will be able to pick them up here on Newegg uh, first. So Ooh. if that is a card that you're looking for, um, it'll be available on Newegg before it's available anywhere else. And I can guarantee you that our social media and possibly even your social media will blow up the second they're available. Mm -hmm. um, so don't get ready to hit F5 today. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully next week, I hate giving out dates because uh, all, shipping. All information and, subject to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hopefully sometime next week. Um, I've seen the cards. They look really good. There's some teaser videos out there. Uh, we put LEDs in the fans in a really unique way. So uh, they're pretty pretty special cards. They're, there's a lot of firsts on those cards. Right, yeah, so. we're, we're all excited to get a good look at those. Uh, I have to commend you like on you're your, flying through. your unscrewing I'm, speed right I'm there. I'm trying. It's pretty simple. Any screw you see, you just take out, right? It's putting it back together. That's <laughs> the, the fun one. My mom learned that when I was a kid, too. So let's see if I oh, man. got all these screws out. Let me just check. Yep. 
Okay, so taking apart cards like this, if you've never done it, is super scary because the thermal paste and the thermal pads create kind of like a little glue. The seal, yeah. Right? Yeah. So you there never, you it. It makes me so nervous. Uh, oh, all right. So, whew, if I get these screws out of the way. Okay. And then I'll disconnect these fan headers. So there you have the card. And you might have seen the PCB before. Uh, it's very close to reference. This is our gaming OC model. Um, so it is a little bit different than the NVIDIA reference. Um, but what I'm kind of excited to show you guys is the actual cooler. And what you'll see on this is we have thermal pads pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we don't just put thermal pads so that they make contact or so that we can take apart the card and say, oh, look, we put a bunch of thermal pads. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if you actually peel back the thermal pad, you'll see that they all have their own little pad that okay. they're connected to, right? And okay. so there's metal that it connects to, and that metal is directly fused onto the heat sink. So it's not uh, just for looks, it's actually functional, right? And so we cool the GPU here. You have what, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes coming directly on the GPU. Nice. And then all of the VRM sections are also um, cooled uh, and touching the thermal pad, even the ones that you can't necessarily see the temperature of, right? Mm -hmm. So this isn't just open up the software and make sure that all the temperatures look good. Even the ones you can't monitor, we're still cooling because again, we want you to get 100% performance out of these cards. And then we'll, uh, let me see if I can pull this one apart. Yeah, let's see the, the comparison and the differences between the two. Well, first, let me make sure I got all the <laughs> screws out. Uh, check, check twice, cut once. Yep, okay, so all the screws are out. This one is a lot easier because I've taken it apart a couple times, and then we'll disconnect the fans. You know, no big deal. NVD. My stomach's in my throat right now, but th that's fine. I know. <laughs> All right, I already talked to my boss, and if I do break them, it comes out of his paycheck, not mine, because he told me to do it, so we're okay. good. As long as you've got the, uh, the approval from on high. Okay. Right. Um, and so here, what you'll see is a huge refinement, right? And mm -hmm. so here we have a large copper plate, mm -hmm. um, and here we specifically go for the GPU die. And okay. the reason that we did that is we found that um, while this looks impressive, this does the same job, right? Okay. And so for this one, um, you'll see something similar to this on the Aorus cards. Um, but we wanted to go for efficiency um, on the gigabyte cards. So you still get the direct touch heat pipes here, uh, and they go directly through the GPU. They don't have as much copper, but they have a lot more nickel plating um, around all the VRM sections. So what you see is kind of like the little brother, um, but refined, right? And, yeah. uh, and a lot less you know, cuts and, and random kind of edges to it. So um, this one uh, was you know, two and a half, three slots almost, mm -hmm. uh, and this one is just over two. So um, a lot smaller, more compact, and a lot more efficient. Excellent. So um, do, you, do you think we're, we're in place, we're ready to show off what a, a system packing one of these cards can do? Is um, that... We can try. We had a little bit of technical difficulty. Thank you for filling in for the first couple seconds there <laughs> uh, and kind of dragging out the Shadow of the Tomb Raider thing. Um, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We're I mean, gonna... I genuinely like talking about Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yeah. so yeah, it was, we'll, it was we'll no take, imposition on our part. We'll uh, take any excuse to talk, talk about games. gaming on the show. <laughs> I, I think it's like Trisha gonna... and I use this as our just like, you know, weekly mm -hmm. tea. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm gonna bring crumpets next week. It'll be fine. Perfect. Uh, so let me see if I can do this. If you guys can actually see this. So we're gonna do okay. Time Spy. There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So we'll just run. Um, everything's on default. I haven't overclocked the card. I haven't touched the card. Um, fan speed. Everything. Um, so we'll kind of go through this, uh, and hopefully it'll give us an on-screen display too. So for those of you watching at home, what you're gonna want to look for is uh, the boost clock. Um, so it's a good time to talk about Boost. So graphics cards, NVIDIA graphics cards, mm -hmm. use Boost technology, mm -hmm. which means that if they're under a certain temperature or under a certain power limit, then they will boost their clocks higher. So what you'll notice is that the first time we run this, you'll see the clocks a little bit higher and the temperature a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. And as it runs, the clocks will go down a little bit as the temperature rises until it gets to kind of an equilibrium point. Gotcha. Um, where the card is happy with its temperature, and it's performing uh, the best it can. So it might be a little bit hard, but right now we're at like 1800. Um, we're using 100% of the GPU, but it's only at 36C. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's a CPU. We're at 57C. It sounds a little bit more uh, accurate. <laughs> um, okay. And so 
Time well, because, spy. Because these new, I mean, like from, from the 1080 now to the RTX, the, these are becoming higher and higher performance parts yep. to include in a case. Yeah, so um, uh, generationally, 1080 Ti to uh, 2080 Ti is about a 30% jump, yeah. um, which is on the higher end of what you usually get generation to generation. Right. Um, if we get 30%, we're usually pretty happy because um, like, it is a big jump. Yeah. Uh, and so these cards, especially if you're running at like higher resolutions, um, th something that often doesn't get talked about is that these have GDDR6. Yeah. Um, and it's the first card to have GDDR6. And of course, it's faster. Um, and what that's used for is higher resolutions. If you're going to run 4K, if you're going to run surround, um, if you want to run 144 hertz, you want that faster memory. Yeah. So on paper, 11G GDDR5 doesn't look, or it looks the same as GDDR6, <laughs> right. but when you put it on your screen, it performs a lot different, yeah. right? And so if you're spending $1,200 on a graphics card, chances are you also spent six, seven, eight, maybe $1,000 on your monitor as well, right? So right. Usually try to pair up uh, your peripherals, your monitor, your GPU for an overall build. It doesn't make sense to buy a $1,200 graphics card and a $100 monitor. Right. You're literally <laughs> right. not going to see the performance, yeah. right? Um, so as long as your components kind of match up, um, then it's a, you know, a great jump in performance, um, and especially at the higher resolutions, which just wasn't possible. Didn't matter what card you bought, you know, 1080 Ti, you're running 4K, you're going to get 30-ish frames per second, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's just not the same as smooth, for, you know, 60 uh, frames per second, or maybe you go to like high or medium settings and you get that 144. Um, so it's really, you know, about matching your system uh, and your expectations. Well, and it's one of the conversations we've been having on the show is to consider this, your build holistically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think there are a lot of people that look at those like generational refreshes where I can sit back on an older CPU motherboard combo for a while and pop in a new GPU, everything's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. This seems to me to be one of those generational updates where bottlenecking on components is, is probably, that, that needs to be weighed in your build or your refresh considerations a little more heavily. Yep, and so I have this conversation all the time when people ask me what motherboard they're, you know, they should use, and my first question is always, what CPU are you gonna use? Right. right. If you're using an i7, then you want the higher end motherboard. If yeah. you're going to buy an i3, you don't need the $300 <laughs> motherboard, you know? And it seems simple to, um, it seems simple, but a lot of times you get so bogged down in all the components and your friend has this one and you really want to get this, mm -hmm. that when you stand back and look at it, it, this part with this part doesn't make sense. And if you just adjust them to be more in the middle with each other, you'll get better performance overall, right? right? So again, you know, 2080 um, plus a, you know, $100 1080p monitor doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know, for that same $1,300 that you're spending, if you get maybe a lower GPU and a higher monitor, you're going to get you a better up. experience, yeah. right? Right. And so my job as product, um, you know, marketing is not to sell you on what I think you should buy. It's to tell you what the card's capable of, what I think you would want to match it up with, and then you make the decision, right? Um, you know, the, the goal is for uh, gaming, to have fun, to enjoy building it. I love building stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I love this job. I get to take apart other people's stuff. If I break it, it goes on my boss's credit card, you know? Uh, it's <laughs> that's great. That's a good job yeah. to have. <laughs> I want that job. Yep. I've, I've fried too many individual things on my own dime. So it uh, looks like this finished up. Let me see if I can yeah. get it here. Yeah, so, so, yeah, can we return to uh, what you're seeing yeah, so graphic score, we got about 13,854, um, which is pretty good. I mean, uh, it, really good. Uh, <laughs> and then what we're going to do is kind of open up um, our Aorus engine here. So this is our overclocking tool. Um, and what you'll see is you have basic modes. So this is kind of basic overclocking. Um, you okay. can click on OC, and it'll go a little higher. Gaming mode is kind of middle of the road. And then silent um, will actually lower down the, the clock speeds and the power. Um, maybe you're playing. I play League of Legends. Mm -hmm. I don't need a 2080. I don't <laughs> right. need it. Right. I, the fan can be off. Uh, I'm pretty sure the card could probably be off, and I'm still <laughs> going to get 60 frames a second. So I'm not so much worried about that. Um, God, I just love how streamlined overclocking is now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's become uh, pretty basic here. Is this going to? Let me see if I can open this up again. sync this up again. It's always, well, it's always interesting uh, when we do these builds because we try to put so many different components. So we have like 
three different RGB softwares running at the moment. Um, <laughs> right. You know, uh, Time Spy open. Um, we loaded the latest drivers this morning, so it's always interesting to see like live how it's going to work. Um, so I think we got it up here. All right. So this is a basic overclocking. Um, have you guys ever overclocked? Uh, well, have you overclocked an NVIDIA GPU in the last I mean, three, my, four years? Yeah, 1080. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they've made it pretty simple, right? Um, now we have these sliders and these power targets um, and temperature targets. So what I did is I just linked the power and the temperature together because I'm lazy and I like less clicks. Um, and all we're going to do is raise the power target as high as it can go. Okay. Pretty simple. Uh, we'll hit apply and then we'll go into the actual benchmark uh, once it loads through and uh, see what score we get this time. Okay. Again, we're doing it live. Yeah. Uh, benchmark and run. So I think last time we were at 13.8. So all we did is move a slider, and mm -hmm. what we did is we told the graphics card, you know what, you have a pretty good cooler, you have pretty good fans, uh, we want you to use more power than you think you should, right? We're gonna open up that headroom of power, mm -hmm. um, and with, with opening up that extra power, we should get better performance, a higher score. Um, but what we're mostly interested in, aside from the score, is how does that affect the temperature, right? right? right. Before we were at like 67, um, if we shoot up to 90, that's obviously no good, right? So right. see what the delta is and see if that makes sense uh, for your system. Well, and, and oh. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's good to keep in mind, too, the build that we have here, uh, we're using a thermal take case. Yes. It's really good for keeping things cool, but yeah, it's not necessarily a form factor that many people have at home. Right, right. So this is, shout out to Mike. Um, this is a Mike <laughs> special. Uh, I don't bend tubes like this. Uh, no. I wouldn't even oh, hope man. to try. <laughs> um, but Mike, oh, anytime we need water cooling, we go talk to Mike, um, and he does something crazy and fun for us. So yeah. um, this is a system he built for us uh, a little while ago, and we just popped in a graphics card to, to see what it would do. Um, so yeah, depending on, on your airflow in your case, um, how constricted it is, your temperatures probably will be higher than this, right? Because this is best case scenario. It's a, a studio. It's kind of mm -hmm. cool in here. We have no restrictions. Um, we even took off the glass so that you mm -hmm. could see the card better. Um, you know, so it's uh, even best of that, all worlds. It, it, it is kind of startling again, just from the 900 series cards through the 1080 and now, that running this card at higher settings is barely adding yes. to the overall fan noise of yeah, the system. So where quiet. we used to make jokes about like the the jet engines that we used to like have as GPUs in our systems. Yeah, I was around for the 480, the GTX yeah. 480s, the ones where all the memes came out about cooking an egg on the card. That was fun <laughs> times. Um, trying to stick four of those in a system and have the fans <laughs> all the way up and then Woo! put a Delta fan on top. Have you guys ever seen Delta fans? No, what no. was that? So these are like the highest RPM. You can literally set it at, on a table, set it to 100, and it will start hovering, hovering. and like moving around. <laughs> awesome. And uh, it was totally a hazard. You could absolutely <laughs> chop off a finger with those things. Um, but they were awesome, right? Because right. you guys were talking about like, we just want speed. It's just, we want Airflow, we want yep. CFM, right. and yep. <laughs> okay, you know, don't stick your finger near it. I, I think I can handle that and uh, and go on. But um, you know, th those were fun times. So today we don't have those considerations. I mean, really, with all the fans in your system, um, you can get it so that you can't hear them at all. You know, yeah. and you can dial that in. Uh, for me personally, um, my wife hates any fan noise. I can't have a blue keyboard at home, uh, so I have to you know, keep the profiles down. And so I find a happy medium where my fans are running at maybe 50, 60%. Mm -hmm. And that's just gonna be my performance. There's other people nice. who have headsets on and it's like, let's max out the fan Cook and it, get those yeah. extra two frames a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Now you were showing off the RGB lighting. Can you tell us a little bit about the keyboard and mouse that you're currently using? Yeah, so, um, you know, we came here today, we brought kind of the full suite. Uh, this is our Aorus K9 keyboard. So you get the full RGB here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a pretty cool keyboard, it's an optical keyboard, um, which means that even though you get the mechanical clickiness of it, mm -hmm. um, there's actually a laser inside. And so when you oh. depress the key and that laser gets broken, it actually registers. So okay. for me, uh, I can't notice a three millisecond versus two millisecond. If you're a professional gamer, it might be the difference between a zero on your paycheck. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we came out with the optical keyboard. I think it looks pretty good. Um, you can do all the, you know, different patterns, rainbow effects, everything we've come to know. Uh, and then we have our M5. This is our newest um, RGB mouse. It's our newest gaming mouse. I think we released it last week. Um, and if it's not sold out at the moment, I know you can buy it on Newegg. I just don't know if it's sold out. Um, and this is pretty cool. It's got a new uh, switch in it, 
a new optical sensor in it. And then, I don't know if we've ever actually shown this off anywhere, but this is our RGB mouse pad. Oh, right? wow. And so you get the full illumination. It's hard, it's not like a bendy or anything like that. Um, just plugs in with USB. And all of this syncs up with our RGB Fusion software. So awesome. um, you guys asked about Aorus a little while ago and like the Gigabyte versus Aorus. So as we came together under kind of the Aorus flag, we'll call it, um, we started integrating all of our software. And so this used mm -hmm. to be a bunch of different pieces of software yeah. to make this all work. Um, and with this generation of card and upcoming motherboards, we've put that all under one roof. So we now have one software that controls all of this. Um, you don't need to, I know it's... That's great. It, it seems like lighting would be really simple um, and we're getting there, um, but to be able to have one piece of software, one thing to you know, work on to set your lights, to troubleshoot as yeah. opposed to four or five of them in different version numbers, um, it's nice to have uh, unification with that. Well, and because that management is extending to everything yeah. in the home now, where mm -hmm. it's you've got a dozen different apps on your phone yes. for other things too. So it's really nice seeing the PC kind of lead a discussion on homogenizing yeah. yes. some of this control. And we work really closely with partners. So um, we work really closely with Thermaltake all the time, um, and we've made it so that all of their RGB can actually be passed through. So if you plug nice. in their fans to our motherboard, um, they will they know match. It's Great. Right? They know and they'll just do, take yeah. the signal, and that way you don't have to have two pieces of software. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, you know, industry partners have been working on that for a while. We're not where I'd like it to be, but we're miles ahead of where we started even a year ago. Um, and so it, it's nice to see simplification, and I know what I want, and I can just set it without having to, you know, troubleshoot. It's lighting, right? We want our PC right. to look good, um, right. but I want to spend my time gaming, not, you know. Managing. Yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. Um, all right, and so in this one, uh, we went up to, looks like 14, 130, so that's plus 300, give or take. Um, okay. And all we did is change the slider bar, right? Um, and so this is our 2080 uh, gaming OC, uh, and we actually released a new BIOS, I want to say about a, a week ago, maybe six days ago, um, that increased that power target, right? Nice. So we went from 109, it was locked at, to you can go up to 122 now. Great. Um, so we've... We tested the cards, we looked at it, we went, you know what, they're running cool, they're running quiet. Um, you can open up the throttle a little bit more. Let's open it up, you know. So, so what did that do to the thermals uh, between those two tests? Uh, I wasn't paying attention, but uh. I think we were, we were still under 70. Oh, okay, uh, great. Yeah, so we're, we're completely fine. I could actually, depending on when the polling was, we might be able to look at the monitor. Uh, I didn't have the monitor open. Um, here, I'll just run it in the background while we talk anyways. <laughs> well, that's all right. Can you talk about uh, the, the difference in terms of real-world performance that we'll see with this? So for the RTX card versus uh, GTX 1080 Ti, um, in benchmarks, you'll see the numbers go up, right? Okay. Um, and then there's always that debate, can you see 144 hertz? I, I'm a 144 hertz guy, right? Um, uh -huh. I have 144 at home. So you will see your frames go up. Um, but again, if you're locked on like a 1080p monitor, you're probably at a point with either a 1080 Ti or a 2080 Ti that you're just adding numbers, right? Okay. Like, you can't see, League of Legends is a good one. Yeah. It doesn't matter that I'm getting 300 frames per second, <laughs> right? Like, it really doesn't. It looks kind of cool, I can brag maybe. From if, a bar graph perspective. Right, it's <laughs> really, really cool. It, it can look interesting <laughs> depending on how you display the statistic, right? Right. Um, right? But real world performance isn't mm -hmm. there. If you're looking at one of these cards, you really do want to be looking at a higher end um, resolution for your monitor, whether that's 4K, whether that's mm -hmm. widescreen, ultra HD, 144 hertz. Um, if you're gonna pay for it, you might as well use it, right? right? You don't want to buy a Porsche and leave it in the garage. Like You want to take it to a test track. So yeah. if you have a test track, if you have a monitor that can support it, that's what you're looking at, you know? Um, and we'll have some uh, other cards, you know, the, the Aorus cards coming out soon to go even further with that, um, look a little bit more blingy uh, and, uh, and have a little bit more performance, a little bit more power target, um, and, uh, and just be able to really like max it out and maybe break some records. Okay, nice. so that was a pretty comprehensive look at Gigabyte graphics cards, past and present. But before we let you go, I know we've been teasing it a little bit throughout our conversation, but I think you might just have a little bit more to share with everyone uh, Yeah, so I think we brought a video with us today. <laughs> I think um, you did. Uh, a little teaser video yeah, to show you to. Um, the LEDs. Pay attention to the fans. Um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, it's, I think it's pretty rad, actually. Um, and so, 
yeah, if you guys got it queued up, I think we're, we're good for it. Cool, let's, let's take out. a look. Let's give it a shot. Man, that lighting looked very fancy. That was real pretty. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it. Um, I'm not typically an RGB guy, but I recognize something that looks good when it looks good, you know? And I think they really want to step beyond with these cards. Um, we'll get into all the specs once we release them of uh, the thermals and some of the, the cool heat pipes that we did on the internals, the upgraded VRMs. Um, uh, little things like we we change the fins on the actual cards so that they're wavy, <laughs> right? Instead of straight, because right. wavy means more surface area. So like nice. just little things um, that we've done to really step that, it up. That's separating us from from the Gigabyte branding. Yes. That's the Aorus yes. RTX 2080 Ti. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, like I said, you'll be able to pick them up on Newegg before you can pick them up anywhere else. Uh, stay tuned to our nice. social media, your guys' social media. Um, I guarantee that they will uh, blow up on social media when they come out, and they'll probably, you know, Hopefully we'll have enough for everybody, uh, but I imagine that they'll go pretty there quick. There might be a line. Yeah. yeah. I need to, uh, to get in line. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've put my place in line, and it's not in the front, and I'm sad about that. So, uh, but I've tried. So uh, thank you, Matt. This, is, this has been phenomenal. Uh, thank you for dropping by, and especially for, for bringing some fun props, too, to, yeah. uh, to kind of talk us through all of this, taking that deep dive on Gigabyte GPUs. Anytime, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Excellent. All right, guys. Make sure that you check out that new Now Deals page for super limited time promotions on Gigabyte. If you need a new GPU but you aren't quite ready for the RTX 2080, for example, you can save $50 on their 1070 Ti graphics card and get it for just $369.99 after a mail-in rebate. Not bad. There's mm -hmm. also a pair of Gigabyte motherboards on that page, so you can find the right fit for you, whether you're on Team Intel or Team AMD. Uh, you can save $70 on the Z. 370 Aorus Gaming 7 OP board, which supports 8th gen Intel CPUs and has 32 gigabytes of built-in Optane memory uh, from Intel. You can uh, also save $50 on the X399 Aorus Extreme motherboard. That's for Ryzen Threadrippers, uh, the Threadripper CPUs. Both of these boards support Gigabyte's Fusion RGB software, which you just saw Matt demonstrate. Mm -hmm. So they offer high performance along with great looks, great customization. And if these laptops we've been using all show long have caught your attention, then you'll want to search Newegg for the Gigabyte Aero 15X V8. This model has a 15.6 inch 4K screen, a 512 gigabyte SSD, nice. and an NVIDIA GTX 1070 GPU. Uh, it's a great portable system and it's currently discounted on Newegg. Good. Go figure. Deal. So we'll be right back sharing some tips and techniques for repairing, troubleshooting, and tweaking your home PC straight from the Newegg audience. Mm -hmm. And while we get set up for that, check out this sweet 2080 unboxing video straight from Gigabyte. Let's do it.
Welcome back to New Egg Now. On the show each week, we talk a lot uh, the glorious highs of PC building, mm -hmm. the aspirations of making your own awesome gaming or workstation. Uh, we feature beautiful builds. Some of the most beautiful I've ever seen. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, like we just saw from Gigabyte, for example. Yeah. Uh, but we don't spend quite as much time looking at the more, uh, the modest side of the DIY PC experience. Yeah. Uh, talking about what happens when your beautiful gaming rig just doesn't work quite right. Yes, so. I, I, I'm sure you get this a lot too, Juan, but I feel like I'm the go-to phone a friend Whenever yeah. any of my family or friends uh, have something go wrong with their at-home PC, it's calling me. I had uh, my my nephew, who is 11 now, call me and say, uh, "Hey, Aunt Trisha, I just uh, I, I I just bought this game and it won't run on Mom's computer, and I don't know why." I was like, "Okay, oh, no. well, let's sit down." Um, but I feel like it's that all of the time. So that that's a it's a real life thing. For a lot of people, and again, like we get to talk about on the show, yeah. the beautiful brand new just made builds with all the latest stuff, um, not the PC that you might have had for two yeah. to five years it's, or more that needs some upkeep. It's really easy to get spoiled by like yes. a top top of the line yes. components built by three experts in their field. Yes. <laughs> like not not just like experts in, well, here's the CPU, GPU tech, but like, you know, thermal take coming on to do right. expert water cooling in your system makes me feel a little inadequate when well, I'm just what dealing I was with say. my own home build. Not only is it getting spoiled seeing the coolest stuff, but it de it definitely makes me feel a little inferior. <laughs> More than just a little bit. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I'm good. Oh, but I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. Uh, but that's Probably okay. That. That's okay. That's why yeah. we bring experts in. So we're all learning all the yes. time. And so to everyone at home that also feels that way, know that you're in good company. Very good company. Um, so just to make sure that we're all starting from the same foundation, let's cover a few PC troubleshooting basics yeah. that everyone should know. Of course, there's no shame in seeking out a professional repair shop or contacting a manufacturer if things are too complicated for you to tackle. I try to remind myself of this all the time yeah. because I don't know about you, but I am a very like, no, I can do it myself person when really sometimes where, it's just better you, to take it to a where professional. Where did you draw that line? I drew the line at I'm not soldering anymore. <laughs> I think that's a good <laughs> that's a good line to draw. I, I, I For me, I, I draw the line when I just, I've tried everything I could possibly try and nothing is working and I, I run out of gotcha. things that are on my to-do list. Um, so, it, you know, PC hardware is not cheap. No. And you don't want to default to having to replace something if maybe it doesn't need to be replaced. You want to make sure that you're confident that you're going to, not going to make things worse by getting in there yeah. yourself. Um, so for everything that we talk about today, please, please, please keep that in mind. We're going to go over some DIY yeah. basics, but only if you feel comfortable. And, and also the, that time aspect of it, too, is like yes. not necessarily the cost sunk into the components, but mm -hmm. also understanding, you know, like every... Every minute that you're managing something or you're searching for a solution is time not spent gaming or working or spending with your family. Your time is valuable. Um, so there are some simple things that you can do when your computer isn't working the way that you want it to. We'll talk yeah. about some basic common issues that you can diagnose or even potentially resolve by yourself on the show today. So let's start with what to do if your PC won't turn on. I think it's a good place to okay. start. Okay, sure, yeah. So keep in mind that won't turn on is very different than won't boot into Windows Fact. or the other operating system, yeah. or nothing comes up on the screen. Mm -hmm. And again, not not necessarily for the people that are, are watching this in our in our live chat and live discussion now. I think most of you probably have a pretty good handle on that. But I know mm -hmm. I get a lot of tech support calls that start with like the assumption of it's not on, or, right? But it's really like a monitor wasn't connected or. There's another problem that you can very right. easily start with that, did you try turning it off and on again style of tech yeah. support. So we're talking about a situation where you press the button and your computer just doesn't go. It doesn't go. do anything. So let's start there. A lot of PC troubleshooting and repair is information gathering. We are not experts. No. But I would say that, especially having worked with you on a couple projects, we're both pretty good at the Googles. <laughs> right? We're pretty good at like diagnosing, coming up with a system and then finding the resources to get the information that we need. So you want yeah. to try things and gradually eliminate the potential issues to right. zero in on what that real problem is. So mm -hmm. in this case, you press the power button, does your PC show any signs At of all. life? Do fans spin? Do lights work? Is it making any noises? Is it beeping? Is it grinding? 
Yeah, and if your computer was working recently without any issues, then you'll want to try to determine what has changed, changed. between then and now. So first, make sure your PSU is on. There should mm -hmm. be a switch on it. Make sure that switch is set to the on, on position. position. Um, usually, that means the line symbol is pushed down. The, the first, that. the first ten minutes of putting together the original Franken build back when her name was that was the problem. That was the problem. Oh. Was like everything's in place. It's like two in the morning because I yeah. waited way too long oh, to start. That always happened. We were like, I can get this done in like <laughs> two hours. Totally Fast forward seven <laughs> hours later, you're like on your sixth cup of coffee. And thankfully, it was only like I, I mean, I might even be exaggerating. It felt like. The, the cold sweat of, oh my gosh, this isn't working. It was probably only like two or three minutes, but it was like, I'm checking every cable and yep. every connector. And, mm -hmm. and then it was just the power supply. Yep. It happens uh, to all so of So always us. try that. Think about any possible sources of damage that could have yeah. physically screwed something up. Have you recently dropped your PC or maybe spilled anything near it? You know, I joke around about having six cups of coffee throughout a build, but right. make sure that that coffee and your build haven't actually touched each other. That's very bad. Yeah, you, that's how you let out the magic smoke of your PC and no one wants that. Mm -hmm. So uh, next, make sure all your internal and external power connections are plugged in. This sounds obvious, but a PC is really complicated. It's probably one of the most complicated pieces of equipment in your home, mm -hmm. way more so than like a TV or refrigerator. Yeah. So a lot of cables that can come loose and cause mm -hmm. problems. I had one that a fan was was just vibrating yeah. and it dislodged one of the connections on my motherboard. Yeah. And these things happen over mm -hmm. time too, right. where that change can happen not perceptibly. So you should check the power cable to an outlet, all power cables coming off or inside the in, inside your case coming off of the PSU, smaller wires connecting your power button to the motherboard, mm -hmm. your internal uh, accessories, and a flashing red warning label here. The danger will Robinson. Yes. Make sure you turn off the power supply before touching any of your interior cables to do that kind Boom. of diagnosis. Yes, that. Again, uh, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. So if you're sure all of your cables are connected and undamaged, there could be something wrong with your motherboard, power supply, CPU, GPU, but congratulations, you're one step closer to figuring out what the real problem is. If that makes you feel any better. I mean, uh, it should though. I mean, again, yes, it's like- This is the process. The progress, right. yeah. Uh, another very common form of troubleshooting is the scenario where your PC will turn on, but won't boot yeah. up. Now, anyone who's been a PC user for more than a year or two has likely run into this situation. <laughs> yeah, probably. If your computer will turn on, but nothing appears on screen, your motherboard might have one of two ways to tell you what the problem might be, and these are called postcodes. Uh, motherboards often have a small speaker on them, which will produce a series of beeps and tones. If you have the manual for your motherboard, it might have a table which outlines when the different beep and tone, what the different beep and tone matters mean, but you can always look it up online too if you don't have the manuals yeah. anymore. Isn't it funny how we can take that for granted for a lot of PC users now? Think about when you, when you started like, rebuilding PCs. Oh, that like, the manuals are online? Yeah. So like yeah. if my PC is just a, a, a table full of individual parts and guts, how do I get online? And now it's like so nice that you can be like, oh, I'm going to look this up on my phone. On your phone. Do this and oh, that's the, that, it's right, yep. that's right there. That was, that was a problem. Yeah. I right remember there. having so many frustrated phone calls uh, back in the day with tech support where they're like, <laughs> and then the you can phone. just go online. And I'm like, I can't go yeah. online because my computer's not working and hence me calling you in the first place. Fortunately, we don't have that problem issue anymore. Oh, what a glorious day. So <laughs> um, in addition to some of those beep codes, th those of you watching this already probably know this too, but you can look at higher end components, higher end motherboards mm -hmm. will sometimes also have a two digit LED readout. And once again, your motherboard's manual will tell you what those individual LED codes might mean. Mm -hmm. There's a table that can explain what those codes mean. You can look that thing up online. But again, as a visual representation of what the motherboard is reporting as the problem, always super, super handy. Right. So one of the most uh, common causes of startup failure that you'll run into is actually problems with RAM. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to make sure that your RAM sticks are seated correctly. Again, making sure you've got that nice, good snap mm -hmm. uh, click into place. Uh, you'll want to try them out in different slots in your motherboard. Some motherboards uh, prefer uh, different arrangements mm -hmm. for dual channel memory to get yep. the most performance out of your investment. And then you might even need to walk it back to the let's try one stick at a time to figure out if maybe you have a bad stick of RAM mm -hmm or a bad slot on your motherboard. That actually messed up one of my friends where he was convinced he RMA'd like 
three RAM kits. Like, I don't know what's going on with this company. Whoa. It's all busted motherboard. There, one of the RAM slots was off, but he was testing in only the first slot and everything worked okay. And then when he would move to it, he's like, oh, well, just, when you go dual channel, there's a problem. And it never clicked in him until he got it to like his third RMA. <laughs> yeah. It's like real embarrassing. Yeah, that's real tricky. embarrassing. That's tricky. Yeah. Um, PC parts do fail over time. Yeah. It's it's just a reality that we all have to deal with, unfortunately. Definitely. And some things you can fix yourself. Mm -hmm. um, again, I drew that line for me. Like I'm not soldering, so I'm not I'm not going to fix anything to that degree anymore. <laughs> but when your RAM or hard drive goes bad, it's a good feeling to be able to diagnose the issue mm -hmm. yourself. I mean, you're probably not going to fix a hard drive, but you you know you can order the part you need on. Some you kind of retailer site, like I, I don't just spitballing here, like off the top of my head, like a like a new egg. Yeah, could probably get you the part you need to get your PC back up and running. You know, if I'm just kind of. So let's say let's say here. you had RAM issues right now, for, for example. example. Uh, then you could get new sticks from Patriot or Corsair yeah. right now on that newegg.com slash newegg now deals page. Yeah, and if you figured out that you needed a new motherboard, uh, you have <laughs> options from uh, Gigabyte, ASRock, and MSI. Mm -hmm. uh, you save money by figuring out the problem yourself. And you save money and time. Mm -hmm. and, and then you also save money by replacing just the part that's the problem rather than yes. having to ship a whole system. Yes. And, and you save money and time by taking advantage of the deals on the page of the show that you're watching right now, which is called New Egg Now. There you go. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how we, many we calls need. I get from my parents that are like, we need a new computer. Oh, no. But they're just ready to buy a whole new computer. <laughs> See, this, this is also one of those nice things, like generationally, yes. my parents were just a little ahead of the tech curve than yours. Oh, like, yeah. like computer scientist mom, I don't, I, don't get the, I don't get the first line of tech support calls. The, oh, yeah. I get, I get to like, wow, that, that sounds like a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're calling me. This uh... <laughs> is above my pay grade. Yep. Nope. Uh, so we have been offering some basic advice yes. for PC troubleshooting, but we know a lot of Newegg fans out there already do tech support for your friends and family. Totally. And uh, we wanted to tap into that pool of knowledge. So this week, Newegg put out the call on Twitter and Facebook asking our fans to share their favorite tips and techniques for PC troubleshooting and repair. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the best. I like the people that responded my favorite go-to troubleshooting technique, which is Control-Alt-Believe. Um, <laughs> there, there were a couple of people that gave us that in there. Well, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be a snob, but a, a good Control-Shift-Escape is I'm, probably where someone really wants to go. I mean, do what you got to do. So I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be elitist here. Uh, so yeah, we have got that pulled up on the stream right now. Oh yeah, oh, they're already sharing my. Beautiful. I, I didn't. It's a good thing I had this website up and not like you know the embarrassing. Not the silly uh, YouTube videos we watched before the show goes that live. We were yep. doing. Uh, yes. So if your PC is underperforming, what tips or tricks would you recommend, John Fox? Since everyone on here seems to know the inner workings of these contraptions. Maybe y'all can help me out. <laughs> so already, <laughs> the Newegg community jumped in with 38 replies to someone asking for love tech support. Love it. I love How that. How awesome is the best. that? That makes me so happy. So this is from uh, Curissa Ellis. This is what I generally do with my own systems. Open the case and dust at least every couple of months. More if you're a smoker or you live with smokers or you have pets. That's great but advice. I have cleaned out some gnarly pet owner PCs. Really? You know, like that stuff sneaks up on you. I don't yeah. think people really understand how much junk yeah. gets collected inside there. Um, I want to open up. He's got a lot to, to, to mention lot here. To so you want to check for proper airflow. You've got nothing loose while, uh, make sure you knock nothing loose while uh, getting in there to clean. Check your mm -hmm. GPU and CPU fans. Um, you occasionally might need to reapply thermal paste to the CPU. Take apart the graphics card if you're a little bit braver. Ooh. Have you ever taken apart a GPU? No, hell no, that's scary as <laughs> uh-uh. I, I was watching the whole show today, like <laughs> I did one water block <laughs> system with a friend. It wasn't for me. Uh -huh. And that was like terrifying. terrifying. The first time you do something like that, terrifying. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So we also want to pull this up on Twitter because we got some great replies here um, from the same asking the same uh, question from the new egg audience on Twitter. From uh, CPE Nasty, aka Nasty Legs Bro. This is a great list. So if your PC is underperforming, disk cleanup, mm -hmm. uninstall programs you're not using, mm -hmm. disable unneeded processes in the task manager startup. For startup, yeah. 
it's it is kind of silly in 2018 of running an MS config. What? Still, still matters. It like, does still matter. You, you, you can still clean up some issues or some performance issues by just looking at what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I don't think it's silly. I use it all the time. To no, clean but stuff I up. just think there's that there's that notion like, oh, we shouldn't have to. Or like you mobile do. operating systems have kind of like yeah. influenced how people think about a glued shut piece of electronics that yeah. you never have to manage. But yeah, it's like, no, this is this is a beast yeah. of a machine. My my go to knee jerk response is always mess with the configuration. <laughs> right. Run anti malware, run antivirus scans, and still having issues, reinstall the OS after a backup. Yup. I've done a few of those in my time too. Yup. Yeah. So uh, we did get, hold on, I'm gonna scroll down here to, this is at AliceWonder32, or Pip Frosh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming is the name. Um, I, tip A, solid state drive, at least for operating system and apps. Agreed. Definitely agree there. Uh, and not all SSDs are the same. Mm -hmm. B, memory, 16 gigabyte for desktops, eight gigabyte for laptops should be the minimums these days. I would agree with that. Absolutely agree there too. Software is getting uh, very intense. And C, Linux, seriously, floss, software, doesn't have all the crap adware installed with it. Um, I know Microsoft has been trying to get after having a, a different tier. Okay. A, a no bloatware mm -hmm. badge that a manufacturer can put on the system. But the more recent builds of Linux, I've been having some good times with too. Yeah. I so think that's why a lot of people turn to Linux. And I also see here that uh, is that Pip Frosh got some new egg love some for answering. Thank you. New egg love. Sometimes the team here just decides to share some new egg love uh, with a little whatever they sign them a hundred dollar gift card. That's so yeah. cool. So not, not not a contest or anything. They were just like, hey, let's hook it up. Hey, let's hook it up. Um, and that's just a thank you to the community for being so involved. And uh, like we always mention on the show. This is a live show. We mm -hmm. love hearing from you. We yeah. love getting your tips, seeing your builds, and that kind of stuff. So every now and then, we get to share the New Egg love back with you guys. <laughs> thank you so much. So again, thank you to all the New Egg fans who shared their troubleshooting tips for this week's show. The PC DIY community is at its best when we're all helping and teaching one another. And it was great to be able to celebrate that today. Yeah, and, and um, you guys are an amazing resource. And also, again, I, seeing that first post on Facebook, with so many people just jumping into a discussion. Yeah. Absolutely Love it. awesome. So we're coming up to the end of the show today, but before we go, we want to highlight a few more of the deals that you can mm -hmm. find on newegg.com slash newegg now. First up, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 1800X CPU. This is an eight core, 3.6 gigahertz processor for AMD's AM4 socket. You can save $20 off the normal price through Newegg now today. Get it for just $229. That's crazy pants. That's crazy pants. That's as um, what my daughter would say. And then down at the bottom of that Newegg Now Deals page, we have special pricing on a 49-inch Samsung 1080p HD TV, which you can get for just $349. So that's a big TV for that price. <laughs> so if you need a new 1080p display, then you'll want to take advantage of that. And we also have an HP Omen 27-inch gaming monitor. It has 165 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time, and it's part of HP's popular Omen gaming line. Nice. It also features NVIDIA G-Sync technology. So if you have an NVIDIA card and you want a display that can keep up with your gaming without any screen tears, then check this one out for only $499 with the promo code on that new egg now page today. Nice. So that's going to do it for the show today. Thank you to everyone out there for watching. Uh, thank you very much to the people that were commentating on our mm -hmm. uh, new egg uh, questions on Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Awesome discussion from you folks there. A major thank you to the folks at Patriot and Gigabyte for joining us on the show. I mean, yes. we still have the guts of graphics cards over on the table They're next to us. Displayed out. I'm, I'm a, I, I might have to lick one. I'm I don't know. I think that's going to happen off camera. So remember to check out the Evolver external solid state drive from Patriot, Gigabyte's 2080 GPUs, those new RTXs, and stay tuned to us here on Newegg Now for more information about that Oris, uh, the Oris gaming card that Gigabyte just teased. Yes. That's coming real soon. Woohoo! Okay, so join us back here next week when we'll have Asus in the studio talking about their Call of Duty Black Ops 4 themed gear, along nice. with some other very exciting surprises that we can't yeah. talk about mm -hmm. just yet. This has been New Egg Now, everybody, and now you know. Bam.